Dear friends of Corporate Sustainability and Responsibility, welcome to the National SDG Roundtable on Education for Sustainable Development, from Choice to Necessity. I am Alexandros Adonaras, and I will be moderating this session on behalf of the organizers, CSR Elas and CSR Cyprus. It is true that the COVID-19 pandemic triggered an unprecedented shock affecting the everyday operations of almost every business across all sectors of the economy. As a result, companies have been forced to rethink their materiality. Environmental, social and governance issues such as employee health, safety and well-being and labour practices changed overnight from posing a moderate risk to being essential to business continuity. It became increasingly evident the need to integrate corporate sustainability and responsibility both horizontally and vertically within organizations. However, to implement such a transformation, professionals in all traditional business functions need to be trained to understand corporate sustainability and responsibility issues. Therefore, training programs on the responsible management of sustainability are greatly needed more than ever. But there are several important issues that we need to consider in this direction. I'm delighted to be joined in this roundtable by esteemed professionals, academics, and friends. In the next hour or so, several interesting topics will be discussed. Dr. Ioannis Ioannou, Associate Professor of Strategy and Entrepreneurship at the London Business School, will talk about the urgent need to rethink the broader purpose of business schools and to redesign business school curricula so as to equip future corporate leaders to achieve the UN SDGs. Dr. Georgia Petkowski, lecturer at the Wharton School of the University of Pennsylvania, will talk about education within the base of the pyramid through a sustainability CSR lens. Megan Fay Sennheiser, Executive Director of the Association for the Advancement of Sustainability in Higher Education, will talk about higher education in the era of sustainability. Rania Sulaki, Group CSR Director of the Hellenic Petroleum, will talk about the professional education as a material issue towards sustainable development. Elina Kuluri, the Human Capital Director, and Ioannis Papaspiros, the HR Business Partner of uh, the Metallurgy Business Unit of Midilineos SA, will talk about engineers in action. I am sure we will all enjoy this interesting round table and find the presentations to be very enlightening. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Yanis Ioannou, and I'm an Associate Professor of Strategy and Entrepreneurship at the London Business School. First, let me start by thanking the organizers of this session for inviting me to speak about this very, very important issue of business education in the UN Sustainable Development Goals. My academic research to date has in, indeed focused on this idea of how do companies and how do capital markets more broadly integrate environmental and social issues into the way they do business, into the way they assess businesses and evaluate business for uh, uh, investing purposes. But today I'm going to wear my educator hat on and talk to you about the, the um, role of business education or as my, the title of my talk says it's about the urgent need to rethink the broader purpose of business schools and to perhaps redesign the business school curricula so as to equip future leaders to achieve the UN Sustainable Development Goals. Now, let me begin by acknowledging that we are going through very uh, uncertain, uh, turbulent and, and idiosyncratic times. The COVID-19 pandemic has caused a major disruption in many aspects of our lives. And I want to emphasize that the, the pandemic has also caused a major disruption to the educational sector broadly. And I think that's, this, this has created, in my view, two very critical sets of questions that we as academics, we as business schools are called upon to, uh, to address. Now, the first set of questions pertains to this idea of how we deliver our content to our students. And here you can think about the technological solutions that have come about in the midst of this pandemic, like virtual or online delivery 
of, of content, or you can think about hybrid teaching, the idea that we have students in the classroom and as well as students at home at the same time. And all these alternatives, if you like, uh, that, that came in to replace our our in-class, on-campus delivery of materials. Now, I'll devote some time to that question, but the, the second set of questions, which I think is the most critical one, pertains to this idea about not only how we deliver, but what we deliver. In other words, the content of business education. This is the one, uh, this is the question that I would like to focus on more in my remarks. But firstly, let me share th some thoughts about this idea of how we deliver our materials. I think that the crisis has essentially accelerated a trend that existed there before the crisis towards more technology-based technology solutions to business education. Now, I'm not going to lie to you in the sense that it has a the, the, the pandemic has forced us into a very, very steep learning curve as we try to translate, to, to deliver our content online, but also as we try to create new, more engaging learning experiences for our students. So in this sense, um, the business education world, I think, is slowly but steadily moving towards a new normal that I think that, you know, we should, in fact, leverage as we go forward, and especially as we start thinking about the UN's the Sustainable Development Goals. Why is that the case? Well, we know and we understand that essentially every single, every single citizen on this planet has a role to play in terms of enabling all of us collectively to achieve the UN Sustainable Development Goals. So in this sense, the, this sort of accelerated use of technology during the pandemic has perhaps a hidden or even an unintended consequence. We have to, in a, in, in, to some degree at least, develop the ability to scale up education much more broadly and much more effectively than we used to. So we've developed this ability because of these technolo technological solutions, but that, that means that we can now reach a much larger audience and we could, in a sense, reduce costs. Think about, you know, traveling and accommodation that we used to pay when we uh, uh, travel to our educational institutions and at the same time even tuition costs. So in my opinion, sort of these are the building blocks of education going forward. And I think this is precisely because of the, this new model of education that we can and should democratize knowledge, enable access to it, and in so doing, reach as many people as possible to explain and to educate, to spread the message and the motivation and the inspiration for the UN Sustainable uh, Goals. Talk about why we have them and what we could or perhaps all of us together should be do doing in order to achieve the Sustainable Development Goals. Now, that was sort of my brief remarks on that first set of questions about how we deliver our content. But having said that, I think it's, it's even more critical to focus on what we teach and not just how we teach it, because that's a very, very important question. Now, there is there's no doubt that business schools play and perhaps should play a crucial role in terms of advancing the sustainable development goals um, through education. So. Why? Because in my view, the role of business schools, it's about enabling and empowering corporate leaders to transform their businesses into a force for good. It's about changing their mindsets. And why is that important? Because we know that businesses are problem-solving institutions. What do businesses do? They find a problem, a gap in the market, and they innovate solutions that they can then effectively, efficiently, and profitably scale up like no other institution can. So you see where the two meet, right? The problem-solving ability of business with 
the problems identified by the UN Sustainable Development Goals. As I often say to my students, the goals are inspirational, they're motivational, they're targets, but most importantly, what do they represent? They represent the biggest industrial challenge that the world has ever faced. It's an industrial revolution. Think about changing the transportation system, our energy system, our food system, our buildings, and so on. So, so here you have it, businesses, and I think the, the, the leading businesses out there have already realize that the sustainable development goals give them a framework of problems to address. And this is a set of problems that in fact requires innovative and scalable solutions. But in order for businesses to see that, in order to educate uh, business leaders to see that, we too as business schools require a radical paradigm shift. Um, I'm, I'm, a shift that indeed it has already started happening slowly but steadily. But in my humble opinion, and given the time constraints that we face about some of these problems, for instance, think about um, climate change, think about the, the loss of biodiversity and so on, I think that we need to increase both the magnitude as well as the speed of that um, change. So what does that mean for a manager? What is the uh, mindset shift that we need to cultivate through business education. I think that for the last 50 years, we have focused on training managers that focus essentially on a very narrowly defined and perhaps short-sighted economic context, um, while at the same time, and perhaps to a large extent, ignoring the social and environmental context and therefore the social and environmental challenges that business are asked to, 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 to tackle, to address uh, uh, in, in, in recent years. And, you know, some of these challenges are becoming worse. I mean, think about climate issues, for instance, with every new scientific report or article that comes down, that comes out, the only thing we're finding out is that things are actually worse than we expected, not better than we expected. So that puts a lot of pressures on, on, on companies and managers in particular in order to manage within, against the background of ever deteriorating challenges. A lot of them, if not all of them, of course, as captured by the UN Sustainable Development Goals. So what can business education do? I think there are a number of dimensions through which business schools can have an impact on advancing the Sustainable Development Goals. And I'll, I'll focus on four major ones, teaching, research, collaboration and partnerships, and business schools as organizations themselves. Let's start with the obvious, teaching. I think there's a, uh, a, an urgent need to embed the sustainable development goals in the curricula and through perhaps a process of reviewing what we're currently teaching, how much are we really moving beyond the narrowly defined economic context, and then potentially deconstructing, if need be, and then reconstructing our core courses, our curricula, our learning experiences to address, of course, the current human needs and human development, but also do that in a way that advances us towards a more inclusive and more sustainable future, a future that takes into account of future, gener sorry, a way of taking into account of future generations precisely as envisioned by the sustainable development goals. And here, you, you can imagine all, all, a whole range of issues, right? For instance, let's think about strategy. We need to talk about how do I compete in a context in which I have to account and I might even need to compete in social environmental dimensions. In accounting, how do I report beyond financial numbers? How do I report on environmental or on social? governance metrics, and so on. Even in terms of methods, a lot of these issues, let's say, again, let's talk about climate change uh, or even income inequality, right? There's a lot to be learned through experiential methods to take people out in nature, to take um, students out in the community to really understand what is the, issue, the issues at hand here. So teaching is one big dimension. Of course, the second one is research, right? So business, uh, there's a lot of research that happens at business schools, which is exactly at the intersection of corporates and society at large. So in that context, I think there's a huge scope to fund, to encourage, and to celebrate research that explores how companies, how markets can advance the sustainable 
development goals. And I think there we need to be bold and brave. We can even, and we should, in my view, encourage radical research, which will, will question the entire system of capitalism, or at the very least, bring it under scrutiny, and therefore to explore and even to evaluate alternative models, perhaps, even, perhaps explore if there are, or if we could build better systems to enable us to to advance or to achieve the sustainable development goals, right? And, and we also, through our research as, as academics, we can also, and I think we should be vocal and take a stance and sometimes even a political stance when it comes to uh, 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 the public debate and debates about policy, because we do know a lot about how companies behave, how companies could behave, both in terms of the pathologies of things like greenwashing and corruption and so on, but also in terms of the opportunities. How do they scale up those solutions? How can they innovate to ad address the world's biggest challenges? The third component is about collaborations and, and partnerships. Um, the UN Sustainable Development Goals have identified a whole host of issues which we would call wicked issues, issues, complex issues, multidimensional issues, functioning across levels and evolving on the ground. So these are uh, issues that a lot of the times they, they lie outside the narrowly defined business school expertise. For instance, if I'm going to teach my students about climate change risks, I will have to first speak with a climate scientist to understand the science and the risks that climate science introduces before I can actually talk about the business risk, whether it's a mitigation risk, whether it's an adaptation risk, whether it's a physical risk and so on. So I think there's a scope for business schools to have an impact towards advancing the sustainable development goals by building collaborations and partnerships beyond uh, what they've done in the past we, to speak with stakeholders that typically have not been in the uh, business school's um, ecosystem. And here you can think about from, from other social sciences to climate scientists and, and, and biodiversity experts, all the way to NGOs and other uh, groups and governments that perhaps understand better issues such as inequality, poverty, and so on. So, uh, and, and you, we already see some of these initiatives, by the way, for instance, we can, uh, you can have a look at what we call the Principles for Responsible Management Education, an organization that tries to um, uh, uh, bring, quite, quite literally bring the UN Sustainable Development Goals within business schools, but also coordinate action and sometimes legitimate action across business schools. Another, we, we can either, you can also do this within business schools. For instance, at, at, at LBS, we, uh, uh, we, we encourage interdisciplinary uh, collaborations. For instance, I teach a course with a colleague of finance, from finance. Uh, so this is a course where strategy meets finance and it's titled Managing and Investing Investing in responsible businesses so the students can see the whole sort of range of challenges, not only of managing and communicating, but in, in fact investing in responsible businesses. And we can also have an impact through collaborations and partnerships with our alumni community. For instance, I am actually uh, advising a, one, uh, a fantastic startup. It's called TreeApp that uh, it's, it's currently launched in the UK, but it's a, an app that allows the user to literally plant trees and in the process be introduced to sustainable brands. So uh, to summarize the, the third dimension, in general, collaborations and partnerships is a very important way through which business schools can have an impact on the sustainable development goals. Last but not least, business schools as organizations can set an example. Whether we're talking about staff policies, whether we talk about engagement with companies, whether we talk about our own strategic plans as organizations in order to contribute to the sustainable development goals. Because we do, we can, and we do set an example. Everything from our cap, uh, carbon footprint, our sustainability initiatives, the objective we set and, and, and as, as organizations to achieve and how aligned they are with the sustainable development goals. Because that allows us, in a sense, in a very real sense, to be credible in terms of telling companies, telling executives, telling students, what do they need to do uh, in order to advance or, or achieve the, the sustainable development goals. And I'll close by giving you an example of this last dimension. At London Business School, we used to have 
the, our logo, our motto used to be, we, we seek to have a profound impact on the way the world does business. But in recent years, understanding the, the challenges that the world is facing, as well as the impact that business can have, we changed our motto. And now uh, our, our objective is to have a profound impact on the way the world does business and the impact that business has on the world. So our responsibility doesn't stop with business, it stops with society, it stops when it business itself has an impact. So just to summarize, I think that business school education and business schools in general have a profound role to play, especially if you consider dimensions such as teaching, research, collaborations and partnerships, as well as business schools as organizations themselves. So thank you very much for, uh, for your attention. I, I thought I would share some thoughts about how this challenge of the, the pandemic challenge has pushed us to think how we deliver our content and what we deliver. And, and I'm really glad to see uh, panels such as this one that really uh, raise the bar and really raise the need and highlight the need for the sustainable development goal to enter the business school education, to enter business school curricula so we can finally uh, train, educate, and motivate the business leaders of tomorrow to use business as an institution to help us deal with some of these challenges, to help us achieve the sustainable development goals. Thank you very much. Hello. I am very grateful uh, for the opportunity to share with you some thoughts regarding the topic education within the base of the pyramid through a sustainability and CSR lens. I structure my comments in two parts. The impact of COVID-19 on a couple of economic uh, activities. And second, uh, how this affects our approach to education, both at the university and comp company level. Let me start with the first topic, poverty. COVID-19 is most profoundly affecting low-income people and less developed countries. In both cases, the BOP or base of the pyramid approach can provide important insights. But first, let's keep in mind that due to COVID-19, poverty is increasing for the first time since 19. 80s. Nowadays, when everybody talks about transforming uh, COVID-19 challenges into opportunities, you should keep in mind that in the case of BOP, the most important thing is to make sure that the pandemic did not become a real tragedy. We have to be ready to deal with the recovery at the base of the pyramid that will most likely last for years to come. Initially, the main focus of the BOP was on how to sell and to make money uh, from the poor people. With my colleagues at Harvard Business School, we fundamentally redefined this approach. We have demonstrated that uh, by segmenting the BOP, we can actually identify value co-creating opportunities by engaging the poor people, not only as a consumers, but also as uh, clients and co-producers. The opportunities have encouraged, uh, these opportunities have encouraged companies to consider doing business at the BOP. They realize that extending markets or creating new markets is critical for their survival and growth. However, accessing this market is a fundamentally, fundamentally different game from the one many companies are familiar with. For example, good governance and fighting corruption are key precondition for more productive engagement in countries with weak institutions. By the way, we need to remind some leading academics, for example, when promoting, creating shared value, that they cannot assume that good governance is already in place, that somebody else took care or will take care of it. 
In fact, I can argue that the mo in most cases, the most difficult complex component of ESG is G, governance, but governance defined in a more holistic way, not just corporate governance, but also institutions, corporate integrity, trust, culture, etc. The same goes with the Sustainable Development Goals. For example, SDG 16 emphasize the importance of strong institutions. So no doubt that good governance and building strong institutions have to be an integral part of our university curriculum. So how have companies responded to the pandemic? Companies have been responding differently to COVID-19. However, it is very clear that companies who had incorporated sustainability into their core strategies before the pandemic are much better equipped to transform the challenges into opportunities. Many companies took advantage of their CSR program to expand them and build a critical base to incorporate sustainability and in that context, SDGs and ESG into corporate strategy. An excellent example of this is Titan from Greece. Furthermore, uh, many companies already have chief sustainability officer as is the case with uh, Firmenich from Switzerland. How does all this affect our approach to education? When reflecting on education, we can look at COVID-19 as an accelerator, leading to an unpresidential speed of change and really unmanageable complexity. We are witnessing fundamental change at the personal, corporate, global, and generational level. Therefore, one of the key questions is, are we properly equipped to deal with the new reality and how is, uh, is this, how this impact our approach to education and human capital development? Let me illustrate the educational response to COVID-19 challenges, including online teaching through my global social impact capstone course for Wharton seniors. The course was fundamentally fully redesigned through a combination of virtual lectures, selected readings, class pools, guest lectures, and breakout room discussion, the course integrated and strengthened students' academic skills and helped them apply these new founded skills to produce a real world consulting reports and project proposals related to entrepreneurial response to the COVID-19. The students provide feedback to the founders of the winning SDGs and her businesses. SDGs and her is a joint uh, World Bank, Ziegling Center at Wharton, UNDP, and UN Women Initiative. The course took the students through the questions that entrepreneurs should address as they go from an idea to implementable solution with purpose and lasting impact. This was reinforced by the HERO Journey, a joint research program with our colleagues from Oxford, Olson Zaltman, that provides in-depth insights on the fear and challenges that entrepreneurs are faced with during their innovation journey. The course also required uh, the, the students to wrestle with the current ethical and legal challenges that business organizations and entrepreneurs face, such as defining the purpose of a business, determining how to incorporate global goals and standards like SDGs and ESG into a business model, and design mechanism to promote ethical behavior, transparency, and accountability. The students also designed 10 project proposals, entrepreneurial response to COVID-19. 
these project proposals are very different from typical Silicon Valley entrepreneurial projects that are built on pre-revenue business model. Fake it till you make it philosophy, etc. This Monday, in partnership with the Ziegler Center and the Idea for Action Club at Wharton, the student presented their project to a group of over 25 leading academics, entrepreneurs, and corporate executives from around the world and develop an expert representing institutions such as the World Bank, UNDP, and GIZ. The experts provide critical feedback and suggestions on how to further improve the project. We are also working with companies to strengthen their capacity to foster a corporate culture supported through innovation and entrepreneurship, such a critical needs in the midst of the pandemic. This is based on the insights from the hero journey research, which is equally relevant to better understand the challenges and opportunities of entrepreneurship. We have tested these insights with one of our corporate partner, Hemofar, one of the leading pharmaceutical company in the Western Balkans. Let me conclude with a few short remarks. The new reality is here, bringing a fundamental change at personal, organizational, and global level. Education and developing capacity to move from challenges to opportunities in the COVID-19 new reality is of the utmost importance. The pandemic just reinforced that the new globalization is also about localization. Most of the global challenges and opportunities require strong support and leadership at the local level. Strengthening education and local human capital to deal with these issues is the key. We need to also make sure that the students and young professionals are an integral part of this process. We, as educators, managers, and leaders, bear the responsibility to help the world, world community, not only to overcome the current pandemic, but also reimagine the fundamentals that will secure prosperity for generations to come. Thank you very much. Hi, everyone. My name is Megan Faye Zahnizer. I'm the executive director of AISHI. Uh, AISHI is the Association for the Advancement of Sustainability. We're a nonprofit organization. We're based in the, in the United States, but we actually have members and, and those involved with the organization span the globe. Uh, so we, we exist to serve anyone in higher education working on sustainability. That could be faculty, staff, students. Uh, we're providing resources and tools to help individuals understand more about sustainability, um, as well as advance institutional sustainability goals at colleges and universities. So I'm going to share my screen here and, uh, and give you a sense, a little bit of a sense of uh, who we are, what we do. So uh, again, the acronym is pretty long, uh, but again, the organization is named AISHI and I'm very privileged to be representing over a thousand institutions. Um, change agents from throughout the globe are a part of our organization. And our mission is to inspire and catalyze higher education to lead the global sustainability transformation. So what that really means, I, I shared that we provide resources and tools to help folks understand more about sustainability in higher education. But what we're really aspiring to do is equip students with the knowledge, the tools, and the skills to understand sustainability challenges that we face, as well as equip them with solutions to tackle those sustainability solutions. So they go out into the world regardless of career path, feeling incredibly informed and again, aware of how they can impl implement sustainability solutions. So that's really what we're gearing towards at, at uh, AISHI and in our community 
is yes, ensuring that the operational aspects of running an institution of higher education are as sustainable as possible. But as a Ford, former board member of ACES used to say, yes, operating the buildings in an incredibly sustainable fashion is incredibly important, but so is what happens inside the buildings in terms of academics and research. So I share that um, because again, there, I think it's really important the, the perspective that I have and when I use the term sustainability, I'm using that in an incredibly broad way as well as deep. And the sustainable development goals that I'm guessing many of you are familiar with that the UN launched five years ago at this point, I think really helped to educate on the breadth and depth of sustainability. And that's the same sort of perspective, that broad and deep perspective that I have and that we have at AISHI when I use the term sustainability. So it's thinking holistically, we're trying to transform institutions of higher education into exemplary models of sustainability. Again, both from the operational side in terms of how the buildings are run, how efficient is the campus, but also with respect to the academics and research and what makes higher education institutions, higher education institutions, and so incredibly important. So that's who we are. One of the key pieces that we do, and frankly has been, uh, I think, pretty instrumental throughout advancing sustainability in higher education throughout the globe, is our program called STARS. STARS is the Sustainability Tracking Assessment and Rating System. And it's a global standard to measure sustainability in higher education. So colleges use the STAR system to understand how they're doing when it comes to, again, operational as well as academic um, perspectives on sustainability. And we have over a thousand institutions across 44 countries using STARS. So it really has become sort of the language around how we talk about sustainability in higher education, as well as creating sort of these, these baselines for institutions to understand how they're actually doing and how they can improve. And for example, when we convene our community, which we just did last week, we had our first virtual conference. Um, typically we meet in person each year and bring a couple thousand people together. Last week we convened virtually and had almost 7,000 people coming together, which was incredible. And when we come together, we have faculty, staff, students, again, a relatively diverse uh, constituency is a part of the AC community. And those folks are coming together to learn from one another, to learn how did a, an institution become STARS Platinum? Because that's essentially, a, a STARS is really a data collection process. And then all the data goes public and institutions can earn a STARS rating, which is bronze, silver, gold, or platinum. Platinum is the highest rating and there are nine, only nine institutions that are STARS Platinum. So there's an incredible opportunity for learning, for sharing best practices, lessons learned, and for helping the higher education community to really evolve and improve to become, again, these exemplary models of sustainability living. And what we're really trying to ensure is that, yes, we want to give students an incredible experience on the campus and make sure that they're, again, equipped with the understanding of sustainability challenges as well as solutions. And we want to make sure that they are motivated change agents so that then when they graduate from their institution of higher education, they're motivated to advance the sustainability solutions they learned about, not just join a firm or a company or some sort of organization that's business as usual, uh, but bringing new perspectives, new energy for sustainability um, strategies and sustainability solution. I also really want to reinforce that because of the STAR system, and again, the fact that it's so um, broad and deep, STARS aligns the, the latest version of STARS, which is version 2.2, because STARS is always on a path of continuous improvement. Uh, so we've, STARS has been around for 11 years, and again, we're on version 2.2. We've continued to evolve the system. And the most recent version, which launched over a year ago, aligns with the sustainable development goals. So this gives campuses not just detailed um, uh, metrics around how they're doing on their campus, but it connects the campus activity to the global sustainability goals. 
That I think is incredibly powerful for understanding not just sort of the, the students learning about the local and global connections, but also for administrators and senior leaders to be connecting the work that they are doing with the global goals. Because frankly, we need more senior leaders that are championing sustainability and supporting advancing the sustainable development goals. Um, so another slide here that I just wanted to share, for those of you that are interested in learning more about sustainability, I encourage you um, to check out the Sustainable Campus Index. So this is our annual STARS report and it captures highlights and best practices from campuses participating in STARS. And again, with campuses participating across 44 countries, there's an, an amazing sort of uh, diversity of thought and perspective in terms of how institutions are really moving the needle forward. So I encourage you to check that out. And the other piece I just want to note here, just given the emphasis on uh, corporate engagement and business engagement at this event, that you really, there's no such thing as a sustainable campus or that can't be achieved without partnership with businesses because businesses or campuses rather rely on businesses for products, for services to help keep the institution moving. So there's incredible opportunity for businesses to be key partners in helping to advance institutional goals, college and universities goals towards uh, improving their sustainability performance. In addition, I just think there's a tremendous opportunity, a learning opportunity, again, for students to understand not just how to do a sustainability assessment like STARS on a college or university, but understanding how companies are advancing sustainability and what true partnership looks like. I think that's just an incredible opportunity that um, colleges and universities should really champion, which is these campus community partnerships and campus business partnerships, because I think there's a lot of value there, again, not just for the campus as a whole, but also for students to see those types of collaborative opportunities. And I guess one other piece is just recognizing that there's an incredible amount of challenges that we're facing. Uh, I mean, this year has just been an incredible challenge across the entire globe with the, the COVID-19 health um, pandemic, with the economic recession that so many countries are facing, with the unemployment rate skyrocketing and the climate crisis. These are overwhelming challenges. And especially for those that work within higher education that are listening in, I think a really important piece is that we can't doom and gloom our students. We need to equip our students with Yes, the education and the reality of the challenges we face, but we need to tie that, that sort of sharing with solutions. And there are so many solutions out there and available. We need to motivate our students to help them feel that change is not only inevitable, but positive change can absolutely be likely. Think through the sustainability lens, that is definitely the opportunity and hopefully campuses across the globe are gonna be able to help again, champion that positive perspective, incorporating sustainability throughout the curriculum, regardless of discipline, every campus, every student on a campus needs to understand the sustainability challenges we're facing and be equipped with the, the solutions to be able to address those, those challenges. I thank you so much for your time. I hope this has been helpful. And again, um, really wanna motivate everyone to get engaged with your, your campus, the colleges and universities in your area. There's an incredible amount of work to be done and inspiration, creativity, and opportunity awaiting you within institutions of higher education. Um, thank you so much. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. Hello. We try to align uh, uh, personnel with corporate values related to sustainable development, and we do that through education. We see sustainability across all aspects of Hellenic petroleum business, and we are engaging employees uh, through education. First of all, we, we have to, 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 to give the definition of company's long-term purpose, the importance of economic case of sustainability, uh, related with HELPEL, uh, to have a deep sustainability knowledge and competence, to become champions of uh, sustainability, all the employees, 
concretion and of sustainable practices, healthy competition among them, sustainability to be visible inside and outside, and adapt changes for transformation, which is also very important in our days. We have created an educational academy, which is called Helpe Academy, and we operate in that program from 2013 till now. So we have, till now, for more than 41,000 training hours, 480 participants, 21 participant teams, and the idea is the training to be driven by managers and to create an interaction between peers, teammates, and managers. The subjects we are discussing is health and safety, environmental issues, exploration, refining and supply chain, renewable energy and transformation in our days, sustainable development, new technology and CSR issues, definition and importance of that, the importance of sustainability aspects inside and outside the company, to, this, to find our stakeholders and the material issues related with them, human resources and the policies they are following and they are adapting, human rights and how we protect them inside and outside the company, local and European network, we are participating, assurance indices, all the regulations we follow, the European policy, we are discussing about global compact and the 10 principles, we are discussing and we are teaching the 17 goals and how we give priorities in our company, governance, the new code of ethics, transparency, and of course the reporting and the GRI indices. Finally, we, after we all we, we finish this uh, educational program, we, we employees feel, are filling a questionnaire and we really find out that the most interesting issues for them subjects are safety, labor conditions, environmental protection, climate care, CSR programs uh, for local uh, community, ethics and transparency, human rights. And of course, they like and they want to participate in CSR actions and best practices to be volunteers. And uh, an example related with that is a, a suitcase, an educational suitcase we created uh, two years before. Uh, we call it the Earth 2030. It's an educational suitcase in a, an interactive game created by specialized teachers, which contains educational material in order to raise students' awareness related to the 17 sustainable goals. Our employees are ambassadors in this uh, uh, educational game and they are teaching into schools how to adapt and how to be uh, uh, best uh, uh, to be uh, induced and to, to learn in an education in an interesting way uh, the 17 goals and how to have to, to adapt them in their everyday life. Thank you very much. Hello, and let me start by thanking you for the invitation today. Um, so, we're going to talk today about Engineers in Action, Metilineos graduate program for young engineers. Let me start by sharing some uh, information on Metilineos company. Metilineos was established in 1908 uh, as a small family business at that time, employing a handful of, of people. Throughout the years, the company has grown significantly and currently we have operations in 32 countries, a turnover of 2.2 billion and more than 3,600 employees. Mitrineos has a quite diverse business portfolio operating in four main sectors, metallurgy and mining, sustainable engineering solutions, production and trading of electric power and gas, and renewables and storage development. Today, we will introduce Engineers in Action program, a graduate program specifically designed for young engineers 
offering them apart from employment, on the job training and critical learning experiences. The program was established in 2014 by our metallurgy business unit as a CSR initiative. It has since evolved into a graduate program that feeds our talent pool. In 2019, we decided to uh, expand the fourth, the fourth cycle of the program beyond metallurgy to all of our business units and central functions. Our vision is for the Engineers in Action program to become an engineering hub that develops best talent and accelerates graduate engineers career development. For the fourth cycle, we received more than 800 applications. We ran aptitude tests, face-to-face -face interviews, as well as a full day assessment center for the 60 top candidates where Mitilineus executives uh, had the chance to participate as assessors. In November 2019, we welcomed 28 new graduate engineers who started their learning journey within Mitilineus. Now my colleague Yanis Papaspiros will continue with some more information about the program, its benefits, as well as the value of it. Yanni? Thank you, Elena. Uh, I'm very happy to speak about Engineers in Actions program. Uh, I'm also an engineer, so I feel proud about our program, which is one of the best ways to pass from theory to practice for our young and promising engineers. About the aim of the, of the project, of the program, our aim is to give graduate engineers the opportunity to take the first steps of a fulfilling career and help that brain drain, especially in Greece. During the 12 months of the program, the graduate engineers have the opportunity to, to work in complex and demanding projects, to participate in trainings, uh, soft skills trainings and technical trainings, and receive mentoring and feedback from the Dilneos executives. Our benefits of the Engineers in Action program, upon the completion of the program, high performers will have the opportunity to join Mitilineos, our team, and uh, continue their career with us. For the third program of Engineers in Action, uh, nine of the 12 Engineers in Action were absorbed in metallurgy of Mitilineos. The Engineers in Action who participated in the first three cycles were able to improve their professional and technical skills, increase their personal income, gain expertise and know how in their field of work. That's why we said they pass from theory to practice. They gain hands-on experience. They enhance their confidence and optimism for the future. And last but not least, they leverage their career in Tilneos or elsewhere in the industrial market. The program's value is similar to corporate social responsibility. So the engineer action program is implementing the context of Yefira is the company's commitment to support the program, which is based on the key pillars of professional development. Also, in the context of its contribution to sustainable development goals for quality education, decent work, and economic growth. But we did not stop there. We also implemented the social analysis uh, in order to, to calculate the as SROE, the social return on investment. So for every one euro which is, was invested in the programs of engineering action, 4.24 euros were generated, the equivalent of 4.24 euros. So the fourth cycle of the engineers in action uh, commenced in November of 2019, is currently ongoing and will be concluded in December 2020. Due to the expansion of Mitilineo's business units and several functions, we anticipate to have a greater impact and a greater social return on investment. Thank you very much. We are remain at your disposal for any questions or clarifications.